How does creatine affect body composition? This is a highly requested topic. I think I get asked about this in my DMs at least once a day. And I've also seen some concerning marketing around some creatine supplements. So I wanted to discuss what creatine is and how it affects and doesn't affect your body composition. So first, this topic technically falls in the nutrition category, and I typically don't do solo episodes on nutrition. I like to leave it up to the experts. However, creatine is widely studied and pretty well understood. So this is one of the only kind of nutrition e topics I feel comfortable discussing with you all, but I'm still going to keep it at a relatively high level. There are many benefits of creatine beyond body composition, but today I'm going to focus on how it affects your body and your performance, if it makes you bloated or puffy, and miss floating around if creatine can make you toned or if it makes you bulky. For any questions about dosage, different brands on the market, if it's appropriate for you, if you you can take it when you're pregnant or breastfeeding or whatever, that would be something to discuss with your provider or read the label on the creatine that you've purchased. So first, how does creatine work in our bodies? Muscles utilize ATP to power their movements, but that ATP is limited. When it runs out, power and strength decrease, which limits the amount of work we can do. Creatine is stored in muscles as phosphocreatine and gives up a molecule to make more ATP. This provides the muscle with more energy, meaning you can do more total work. So by supplementing with creatine, you can potentially do a few more reps than you could otherwise because you have more available ATP or energy to fuel you. According to one paper, people taking creatine could typically train at around 31% higher volume so they could do more sets and reps than those not taking creatine. So by taking creatine, you can potentially perform better in your workouts, which will have an effect on your results. Not only that, but creatine is osmotic, meaning it pulls water into muscle cells. This increase in cell volume can trigger protein synthesis and enhance glycogen storage. This combination of being able to do more in your workouts and increase in cell volume and glycogen storage means better strength gains and better muscle growth. Now, the question is how much better versus if you're not taking the creatine? One paper in adults aged 50 plus saw, quote, significant but small to modest benefits in muscle mass and strength. So they gained about one kilogram, so 2.2 pounds more muscle than those not taking the creatine. Another large review with adults of all ages, male and female, noted a 0.82 kilogram, so about 1.8 pounds increase in average in those taking versus not taking creatine. They also noted that it is only significant when combined with proper resistance training. So you can't just take the creatine and expect any growth. This paper also added that there is no significant change in fat mass by taking creatine. Next, does creatine make you retain water? Yes, and people avoid it for this reason, but it does not make you look puffy. People hear water retention and get scared thinking creatine is going to make them look puffy and bulky, but creatine draws more water into the muscle cell, meaning the muscle appears more full. It does not appear to increase subcutaneous swelling. So because the swelling is not under the skin or between the muscles, it doesn't give that puffy or bulky look that many are afraid of. In fact, increased cell volume can be a positive thing, potentially triggering more muscle growth over time if you are training correctly. So this water retention remains until you stop taking the creatine and generally goes back to baseline within two weeks after stopping taking creatine, but the water retention is truly nothing to worry about. So overall, creatine supplementation will have small effects on body composition and performance. If you are training properly, you will see small strength and muscle gains versus if you weren't taking it, but you will not lose fat. Creatine has no effect on fat. There also is not certain types of creatine that will tone and other types of creatine that will bulk. If creatine monohydrate is the basic ingredient, it will have the same basic effects despite the marketing on the packaging. The bulky appearance is generally from gaining fat mass and gaining muscle mass over the years, and creatine has no effect on fat mass. If you want to lose fat, that will primarily come from changes in diet. Creatine will increase cell swelling, but it doesn't create that puffy or bulky look as it doesn't increase subcutaneous swelling. Second, a toned aesthetic is 
from having a low enough body fat percentage to see visible muscle definition. This comes in the form of losing fat and or gaining muscle. Creatine does nothing for fat loss as fat loss is primarily due to being in a calorie deficit. It will have some small effects on muscle mass and increasing muscle mass, but training properly is the primary driver for building muscle. My goal for this episode is to educate us on the effects of this popular supplement, but I want you to take away that it really isn't a magic pill. We also have to be really cautious about the marketing around supplements. Big claims of drastically changing body composition generally are misleading, and you may be wasting your money on supplements that have these overpromises. Now, are there certain types of creatines that are quote unquote cleaner than others? perhaps, but that's not what I'm discussing today as that would go beyond the scope of my expertise. I personally take the just ingredients creatine. I think it's great. That's not sponsored by the way. My husband uses the cheap stuff from Amazon and he likes that. So do your own research and maybe talk to a registered dietitian about their recommended brands if you need more info there. I hope this helps. We will see you all next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now.